Hi guys, welcome to this video and I am going to be talking about um, UK's top dog breeds in this video. I will try and give like a really objective view of each breed and at the end I'm going to talk about the underdogs haha, um, of dog breeds. Disclaimer, this is all my opinion. You don't have to take it as gold. It's just a few stories of what I've seen in practice and also what kind of breeds have more problems and what kind of breeds don't. And I hope you enjoy. <laughs> so looking on Google and looking at the top five dog breeds of the UK, what's interesting is Labrador has actually been overtaken recently by another breed of dog and it's a Frenchie ah Frenchies um so obviously the first dog I'll be talking about is Frenchie they are super 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 cute everyone loves a Frenchie they've been super popular in the past 10 years I've never seen one when I was a kid and then coming to England they're literally everywhere I've met a fair few Frenchies. The temperament is something else. Like, they have such personalities. They're super stubborn, super cute, love companionship, and they don't need that much exercise. That's a key point. So people in London, especially with flats, really like them because obviously you don't have to walk them so much. And in fact, the big thing about Frenchies is don't walk them too much, don't super exercise them, especially um, in the heat like now, because they don't really cope well with super, super exercise. I guess everyone knows that Frenchies, they are a breed of brachycephalic dogs and brachy, brachy means short, cephalic just means the nose area, so they're short nosed dogs. If you look at them, and the pugs, they all have really, really stout noses. It's like it's been squished into their face. And that is kind of what makes them cute almost, which is really bad. So I'm sure a lot of people know about this, but they get a problem called BOAS. It's short for Brachycephalic Obstructive Airway Syndrome. And what that means is that they find it really hard to breathe. So but there's four things that make them a BOAS. Um, Averted saccules, stenotic nostrils and so that just means like their nostrils is actually super small if you compare it to a smaller dog like a cocker spaniel you can still tell that they're not their not nose hole is super small so that's one of the categories and then they also have a elongated palate it's really hard to explain and i didn't even fully get it until um when i saw a surgery with it but basically their the flap in the back of their throat keeps getting in the way of them breathing they also have a smaller breathing trunk so if you think about it you know hose pipe the bigger it is the more air goes through but if they have a smaller one that makes it harder for them to breathe as well so that is the major major disease of frenchies so if you were to get a frenchie i really advise you to get insurance. In the UK you can get insurance for them. I'm not sure about in other countries, but if you can, do it because if they ever had to have a BOA surgery, it's not a crazy surgery, especially if you do it with an experienced surgeon, but obviously it's expensive. So if you had insurance, that would make it 10 times more affordable and also then you can actually go ahead with BOAS to correct all the, you can correct the nose to make them bigger and you can also shorten the long palette. Other things that Frenchies have, most of the Frenchies I see actually are, were for soft tissue surgery, so for the BOAS surgery, and most of the Frenchies I've seen were for back problems. So a lot of them actually have really deformed backs, but recent research have shown that a lot of them actually can do their daily life things without having surgery. It's all, it's all just a d deformation that doesn't really hurt them. But some of them do have to have spinal surgery. And that's where I saw most Frenchies. It was in the neurology ward. But saying all this, Frenchies are so cute and they're so, they're such good people dogs. You know, if you really wanted one, 
then just be prepared that obviously any dog can have anything go wrong but for Frenchie especially Boas to be a thing that you should look out for. That is the reason why Frenchies are not really made for long distance running for example because they don't have the mechanisms in their nose. The second dog on the list is Labradors overtaken by Frenchies. Um, Labradors are the perfect patient. They are, if you give them some food, they're there. As long as you've got food, they won't object. Labradors are so adorable. I've seen one aggressive Labrador, but that's it out of all the Labradors I've ever seen before. They are so friendly. They love fuss and great family dogs. A health problem that Labradors often present with are usually things like um, skin lumps or things like a hip dysplasia which is basically got your hip socket and then your femur, your bone that goes in like this. Um, it just doesn't fit, so that's that will cause them pain. That's a common problem of Labradors, of any really large breed dogs really, not just Labradors. They're also prone to getting OCD, which is osteochondritis desiccant. I'm really bad with Latin words. <laughs> so OCD is just bits of fragments of bone that gets between so if this is two bones, it's a joint, you get bits of fragments in, the, in between because of how fast they're growing. Usually it's a younger dog thing. But besides that, I think a known Labrador problem is obesity, because they love food. Um, I think 70% of the Labradors I see are obese. Third dog on my list is a Cocker Spaniel. I absolutely adore Spaniels. I think if I were to get a dog, it'd be some kind of Spaniel. Obviously, everyone knows Spaniels are full of energy. One word I can describe them is energy. I don't even know how else to describe them. They are so friendly. They are so just bouncy, like constantly needing attention. I guess one of the bad things of that is that you have to exercise them a lot because they need it or else they go crazy and they bark a lot. Normally at the hospital, the spaniels are usually the one that's howling and trying to get out of the cage because they need constant attention, they need constant stimulation because they are so like uh, uh, hyper. Hyper, that's the word, hyper. They are absolutely hyper. The top of my head problem that comes up with spaniels are ear problems. They have such big fluffy ears that come down, it's not aired out so it gets really like gross and soggy in there. You can get otitis from that. Bacteria loves soggy places, dark, soggy, gross, wet places, and that is spaniel ears. One thing that I guess spaniels have is progressive retinal atrophy, so they can, can, okay, not all spaniels, just a tiny percentage of spaniels can um, acquire blindness. When dogs get old, when people get old, we get sick and it's not something you can avoid, but it's just one thing that they can get, but that that shouldn't put you off getting a dog just because they can get that disease. And like any medium to large breed dogs, they can get hip dysplasia. One of the cautious things that you could do when you get a puppy of large or medium large size breed dogs is that you can ask the breeder for a hip score. So usually if they are a good breeder, if they do this often, they will have hip score from vets where they take an x-ray of the mom and the dad and they compare that with like a gold standard hip for example where the socket fits exactly in there and they'll give both of them a hip score and hopefully the pups that come out of a good hip score parent would also have good hip score and that's how you can try and eliminate the risk of your dog getting hip, hip dysplasia. And the fourth most popular breed is, I couldn't believe this when I saw this, but it actually is a pug. And I kind of thought that pugs were 20 years ago. They were really, really popular at one point. It was like the Frenchy wave, but it was a pug wave. I remember everyone thinking that they're really cute and wanting to get one, but apparently they're still really popular. And I think pugs are, great personalities. I don't know why, but they are, they remind me of a Frenchie. And funnily enough, I think 
maybe it's because their personalities are quite, or the temperament is quite the same. They're quite stubborn. They love to just like lie on the sofa. And interesting fact about pugs is that they were bred to be royalty dogs. So I guess that kind of shows you, like it kind of fits. A pug likes sitting on your lap, likes sitting where you're sitting rather than on the floor. Like they like to be part of the human conversation kind of. Um, pugs I think are super cute. They are again not a lot of exercise needed. They again are brachycephalic dogs so they are prone to heat stress and you wouldn't exercise them like you would a collie for example. But they love human company. I think that is the most important thing if you want a lap dog, if you want something that is low maintenance that is a perfect kind of dog again they have boas problems so they can't really breathe that well if you listen that they're all constantly snoring the more they snore the more you can tell that actually they have a problem with their breathing mechanism so again if you get a pug get insurance because potentially you could sort it out with surgery depending on how severe the issue is things that pugs get are also to do with their eyes because their eyes are, you know, we think of their eyes as really big and bulgy and cute, but actually that puts them in, at risk of having a dry eye because it's so far out from their head. So things to look out for if you have a pug, eye problems, if they have a red eye or skin fold dermatitis. So because they have so many folds, you kind of, it sounds really gross, but things can get between the folds. So if you ask the bacteria, whereas the second place they're most likely to live is probably between folds of dog skin because it's moist and it's dark and it's protective little cocoon for a bacteria. The last dog on my category is another spaniel and is an English spaniel. And they, again, like the Cocker Spaniel before, they get ear problems, but they are, again, super, super, super energetic. Like, you need to walk them all the time. I think Spaniels as like a family is just really like full on. So yeah, if you ever get a Spaniel, definitely make sure you have a lot of time to spend with them. I guess Spaniels are amazing because they have this silky coat, but that means that you have to groom them often because if not, it just kind of grows all over the place. They also have the thing previously mentioned, PRA, progressive retinal atrophy. And I don't know the exact mechanism, but they do get a lot of allergic skin disease. And so that's another thing to look out for. And it's time to talk about underdogs. Underdogs. Um, I love talking about underdogs because I love underdogs. So when there's like a football game going on, I'm always like, which one's losing? I'm supporting that one. I have two things in this category that I really love that I think people don't really pay much attention to is the first one is Staffies. I think Staffies have the greatest personality. They're so easygoing. I think there's a wide misconception that Staffies are aggressive. I think it's the way they look. They look kind of like pit bulls, but they literally have the friendliest personalities. I've never met an aggressive Staffy. You can say that they're not a looker, but I personally think they're very cute. They get things like skin issues, like skin tags or lumps and bumps, but a lot of them are like benign bumps. And obviously a staff, you can get anything, but overall I think they're great dogs to have. And the second underdog that I'm gonna talk about is mongrels. I love mixed breed dogs. I think they're the best. I think they get the best of both worlds. The more mixed, the better to me. I don't know if people know, but inbreeding causes a lot of issues because genetically you are almost selecting for the genes that are bad. Whereas mixed breed dogs, they don't have the purebred problems. They're less likely to have things that come with a breed, if that makes sense. It's almost like they take the best from all the breeds and just make a dog. And I think they're such good kind of surprise dogs. You don't know what they are and you're always wondering and I think mixed breed dogs are lovely dogs. My boyfriend's mum has a mix Husky, Labrador and Collie and she is the loveliest dog I've ever met. And another reason I think they're the underdogs is because they're the ones that are always in shelters. People are getting purebred dogs from breeders and buying them for loads of money. But then there are these lovely dogs in shelters that need a home. And Yes, you might not know what breed they are, but does that really matter? Like, I think they're just, 
I think they're gorgeous in every single way. So that concludes my video. I hope you enjoyed and um, please, just because I said this dog is more likely to get this, do not get worried and think, oh my god, my dog is gonna get this. Like, it's not gonna just get that because I said so. It's just more likely statistically. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my video and I will see you next time for something else. And just like always, my Instagram is on the top left corner and don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss my next video. Thank you.